Hi, my name is Lynn and this is the Darben Orver channel. Well, like many of you know, I have a shop where I sell my wax polishes and my solid head wooden mallets. Now, I often get questions about the mallets, how I make them and requests for a video. So today I'm going to show how I make one of these mallets. Well, it all starts with the wood, of course. This time I'm picking out a piece of maple from the stack here that I'm going to mill up on the bandsaw. I'm using my log milling jig here, which I'm still looking to perfect and make a video about. It is quite the luxury having a thick piece of wood like this, since it enables me to make a thick slab for the head. Here I'm aiming for about 4 inches, however this varies depending on what wood I'm working with usually. Next, I'm taking the piece to the miter saw, which I have set to two and a half degrees. However, you can set it to any degree you'd like, and I'm cutting the sides to make a head. So now it's time to plane the wood down to make sure I have a nice smooth block to work with. And I'm using a number four plane. Then bringing out the tools to mark the piece out. I'm using a bevel, a divider, a pencil, a ruler, more disengage and an engineering square. Now a solid head mallet is constructed like this. I have a block with angled sides. I need a hole in the middle that carries that angle from the top to the bottom. So when the handle gets inserted, it's wedged in, which is why it stays and doesn't fly out. To accomplish this, laying out your marks right is crucial because everything will follow that. So first of all, I'm making sure the pins in my mortise and gauge is set at the same distance as my chisel, which is 3 quarter inch. Then I'm making sure the pins are located in the middle of my block, so testing it out and adjusting. What I need to do first is mark the top and the bottom with the mortise and gauge to get these center lines, which will also be the thickness of my handle. So marking all across on the top and in the center at the bottom. Next, I need to find the center at the top. I do this with a divider, and then I mark the center with a pencil. At this point, I mark out the width of the handle from the center. My handle will be one and a half inches at the top, so I measure out three quarter inch on each side and draw lines from the mortising mark to the edge. Now I have the center marked out where the handle will fit, which needs to be carved out. Then I'm going to use the bevel, which is set at the same angle as the sides at two and a half degrees. And I'm bringing the lines all the way down. Then I take the engineering square and bring the lines down straight to the side of the mortising mark. And I have the underside marked out as well. So here we have the piece marked out from the top to the sides to the bottom. Next, to remove material in the middle, I'm using a drill with a 5 8 inch spade bit. First, I'm finding the center in each section. I'm drilling at a slight angle, trying to fall the angle of the sides to about halfway through, then repeating on the other side. and the chiseling begins. As in most woodworking, following the layout lines is very important. Initially, it's important to define your knife lines. You don't want to dig into the wood before you have established the boundaries of the chisel. Once the lines are established, I can start chiseling a little harder. And once the top is done reasonably well, I switch it over and do the other side, repeating the steps. When I'm getting close, I like to take a small ruler and insert it, rocking it against the sides to see where my high spots are, and then going back and working on those. A little more carefully though. I have a one and a half inch by three quarter inch piece of ipe here for the handle. So first laying the head on it and marking the top and the bottom. 
then I'm checking the width of the bottom hole with a compass and marking that distance on the bottom mark on the handle, then marking that distance to the top with a ruler and marking the width of the handle all the way down. Now I'm using the bandsaw following the lines to cut the handle to size. Next, it's all about cleaning up the interior of the head and I'm using a finer chisel now in order to fit the handle. Then trying the handle in to see if it fits, doing a little more chiseling and so on. When you get part of the handle in, if you're using a different colored wood, you can see the high marks on the inside where it's rubbing against, and then you'll know you'll need to take that down a bit. Now I really want a tight fit, so it's important to not take off too much, especially not at once, yet at the same time you do need it to fit. And then you can bang it in, see how much further you need to go. see the marks, and go back and chisel some more. It's looking pretty good. To decrease the chance of the wood busting out at this point on the sides here, I like to bevel the edges down slightly with the chisel, both on the top and on the bottom. And cleaning the inside up a bit more before testing again. It looks good. Now it's time for shaping. I'm starting with the handle and using a spoke shave to round the corners. And of course paying attention to grain direction here. I really like using this tool. When the handle is fitting in the head, I'm marking out where it needs to be cut on the top and on the bottom. and shaping the top, adding some beveled corners, and smoothening out the bottom too. Next, shaping the head. And here you can really do what, whatever you want. For this mallet I wanted some shape, so I chiseled down the sides slightly. Then doing some planing, and finishing up with a spoke shape on all the sides. Now finally, sanding. I like to start with 60 grit. And then move up quite high to 220, 320, something like that. And only finishing left. I use my wax polish on all my mallets, which I really like because it protects and adds a very nice smooth feeling without becoming too slippery. For example, I wouldn't use shellac or polyurethane here because I don't want the mallet to fly out of my hand when using it. Uh, and the wax provides just the right finish. So, it's looking good. Well, I actually really like the way this one came out. I really like working with the maple and I really kind of like how thick uh, and substantial it is. And one of the reasons why I personally really like to make mallets is because I really like to play with different types of wood and making a mallet is really the perfect excuse to do so. Because when you make a mallet, you really get a great feel for the wood, which is why I have a lot of different types of wood in my shop. I have walnut and oak and Osage orange, angel heart, Ipe, hickory. Um, and now I'm going to be adding maple to that as well, which I'm excited about. And I'm working on a couple of additional maple ones as well. When I make these mallets, uh, I want to make them nice and smooth, but I also don't mind leaving some of the marks of making them and some of the planing marks on them. I just think that kind of adds uh, a nice amount of character to the mallet. And these are really meant to be used. They're not meant to sit on the shelf and be looked at. They're really meant to be used. So yeah, that's a little bit about how I make my mallets. And of course, I make them in different sizes and shapes, depending on what wood I have around. But if you make a mallet, make sure to send me a picture because I would love to see it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Um, if this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe because I put out project videos every week. Otherwise, thank you so much and I'll see you soon. Bye!